Welcome back, everybody, to the Submission Fishing Podcast. Glad you could join us. I'm your host, Muto. It's our mission here to get you guys a black belt in fishing. I'm the owner of Submission Fishing Company. We make uh, jigs, primarily slow pitch jigs. We get some apparel, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, on today's show, I just want to talk a little bit about winter fishing. You know, we're in the middle of winter, uh, middle of December, and uh, you know, we got some months coming up where we're just pure winter fishing. The temperatures get cold, and just give you guys some examples and tips of things that I've done in the past and ways I've been able to get bit and keep fishing. You know, I fish year round. I don't stop uh, when it gets cold. I know a lot of people out there, probably not if you're listening to this show, if you're, if you're listening to a fishing podcast, you're probably not in that group. I I assume you, you fish a lot, but, um, you know, we'll definitely go over some tips and then really some reasons why you should be fishing in the winter too. There are some advantages, you know, that we'll go over. Uh, so of course we've got the news, we got some of your questions at the end and yeah, hopefully you learn something and enjoy the show. And if you guys ever have any um, comments or questions or anything, you can always reach out at info at submissionfishing.com. You can email us there. Um, Anything you got on your mind, just um, let us know. So let's getting into announcements. Um, Really not too much going on. If you're in Southern California area and you're a spotty fisherman or you want to get into tournament fishing in general, uh, spotty bowls going on. I know I've talked about that a lot. If you guys are uh, new to this show, it's a um, basically a spotted bay bass tournament in Southern California. The spotted bay bass is probably the it's a just a bass in the bay. Uh, that's obvious, right? <laughs> spotted bay bass, but it's um, it's a really it's a smaller fish. It's a good fighting fish that's become um, really synonymous with tournaments out there. It's a great recreational fish that a lot of people fish for. Um, they're fun to catch. They're there year round. And, um, yeah, spotty bulls really been the biggest tournament. I've been with them since the beginning. I competed in the first couple. Um, and I've been a sponsor since the the very beginning. I think this is the fourth, maybe fourth year. Yeah. Fourth spotty bull crazy. And it was really, it's a good, it's a good tournament. It's the biggest one. Now it runs uh, multiple weeks and then there's like a playoff. So depending how you uh, do throughout the year, you can make it to the playoffs. Then it's an elimination and, Uh, Yeah, but tons of side pots too. So even if you guys don't want to fish spotties, there's like halibut pots and shortest fish and biggest fish and trifecta. There's just really the best bang for your buck. So, I mean, that's starting, I think, early next year. So definitely get in on that. There's going to be some submission fishing um, side pots, which we sponsor. So look out for those. Uh, Usually it's the biggest fish cut on submission jig. Anyone give cards and stuff like that. So really a lot of fun. So that's definitely coming up. So go check that out if you are into competition fishing, or maybe you just want to get into it. It's uh, it's great. It's, it's really competitive, but it's also, it's a good beginner place to start because there's lots of, um, like lower tiers that you can do. There's like weekend warrior, there's provision, then there's the master. So you don't, it's not like, you know, you have to go in against all these ringers, like the guys at the top, really good fishermen, but you can start in the lower uh, rankings, especially if you've never competed before. And, um, you know, just see how you do. And those are a lot more chill and obviously there's no expectation for you in, in those, but it's a good way to get your feet wet. You know, I've seen people compete in the lower divisions and work their way up and really be successful. It's really cool to see. So excited that that's going on. Um, also in the news, there was for all the Florida guys out there, I just want to bring to your attention. There was the, um, the fishing license, uh, so it's the Great Outdoors Initiative. So DeSantis designed it. This was in October. So for three months, you can get half off of um, a fishing license and then state park um, entry as well. So it says the Great Outdoors Initiative. This was from uh, the Florida website. It encourages Floridians to get outdoors, explore Florida's natural resources, including our award-winning state parks, uh, vast recreational areas, uh, the world-renowned waterways as part. Uh, the Great Outdoors Initiative, Governor DeSantis signed executive orders. It was 2309, the Great Outdoors Initiative, uh, directing the Florida Department of Environmental Protections and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to provide a significant 50% discount in annual state park passes and fish and wildlife gold sportsman hunting and license, fishing licenses. The governor fully supports Floridians to enjoy the state parks. Yeah, so the biggest thing about this is you can get, and this is what I did. So I bought the lifetime membership. So the lifetime gold membership is basically it's freshwater fishing, saltwater fishing, um, hunting, 
And it came with just like all kinds of other like crabbing and just lobster fish like just a whole bunch of stuff it was really crazy for half of it i think it was cost me five hundred dollars uh for a lifetime membership for all those things so if you're into even if you're just going to use one of them i mean it's probably worth it you know you don't have to worry about it anymore um but yeah getting all three so if you especially if you're fishing freshwater saltwater i would say you can still get the half off on a yearly thing and then they have like a five-year one you can get the half off on too but i think really the half off on the gold sportsman for lifetime is really a great thing and that it comes up in january 13th so it started in october october 14th 2023 till january 13th so we only got about a month it's um december 13th today so there's only one month left by the time you're hearing this it'll probably be you know even a couple days later but um if you're a resident of florida definitely look into that and go get that because that's i i think really good value um but yeah that's coming up so i just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention that's something you want to do. Um, I think it's, that's really cool. I've been kind of going back and forth. Like, I think I, I think I'm going to go in for my daughter too. You know, she's only like 16, 17 months old. So that'd probably be perfect. I mean, unless she grows up and decides she doesn't want to fish or run or anything like that. But for a while, I don't think she'll have a choice. I'll, I'll take her out there. But I, I think just to have, I, I don't think you can pass that up. So yeah, something definitely super cool. And uh, thirdly, we have um, gift cards on sale on our website, Submission Fishing. So if you guys want to get some slow pitch jigs, the gift cards themselves aren't on sale, but we're having um, deals. Like, so if you buy a $50 gift card, you can get a $10 gift card for free. If you buy a $100 gift card, you get a $25 gift card for free. Um, you put in code, I think it's uh, Christmas 50 or Christmas 100. And then you put the gift card in with it and then you get a free gift card. So either add it for a bonus if you want to get something for somebody or just um, keep it for yourself. And with that, let's get into our main topic. So we're talking about uh, tips for winter fishing. These are just some of the things that personally I have experience with, um, things that I've done. And, you know, I fish year round. I don't stop fishing. Like I was saying, I don't think a lot of you guys do either if you're listening to this, but maybe you do, maybe you're just, you're a summer guy thinking, you know, that the fishing's so much better in the summer and that maybe you only like to fish when the bite's going off. And, you know, I, I kind of understand that and it, it, it can get tough in the winter and that's why we're here. Give you guys some tips and, you know, a true black belt's going to be out there no matter what, even when it gets tough and you can really learn a lot. Uh, so yeah, let's just sort of fish our, one of the biggest problems is and one of the, why the winter bite is so tough is because fish are cold blooded, you know, unlike most other animals in the kingdom, you know, aside from like reptiles or warm blooded animals. And the difference is that we have to, we have warm blooded as opposed to cold blood or warm blooded. We create our own heat source. That's what makes us eat. That's what, that's why we get energy. We create our own energy source. Basically. That's what's unique to mammals. Um, so the warm blood creates its own energy source which allows the body to move and but then we have to continually eat especially when it gets colder we burn more energy because the body is trying to stay warm um, so it actually burns more calories when it's cold because you know you start shivering and stuff like that so in order to stay warm the body starts producing more heat you're warm-blooded well when it comes to fish with the exception of a few fish uh, most fish are cold-blooded i think only one in a thousand species of fish are actually warm-blooded there's like I don't even remember. I think the Opa is, I think some tuna are like bluefin and stuff like that, but fish are cold blooded. So what happens is once the water temperature drops, you know, a significant degree, they naturally just slow down. It's just, it's a physiological reaction that they really can't help. They don't create their own heat source. So they get their heat source from the sun and the temperature around them. So water temperatures plummet. <laughs> Unfortunately, fish activity slows down too. Um, and this happens in a myriad of ways. One of the biggest problems is uh, the metabolism slows. So they actually don't have to eat as much because they're not moving as much. So it's sort of like a compounding of issues as to why the bite gets really tough. Because for one, they've already slowed down eating. And then two, they don't need to eat because they've slowed down. So it's like it's this vicious cycle where they – it just it compounds on itself, you know, and it, it's really makes for a tough situation in the uh, fishing world. 
And that's just one of the things we have to deal with. Um, the good news is, uh, one of the good news is that the the fish that we catch, so we're talking about uh, lakes, uh, bays, over here in the river, St. John's River, San Diego Bay, all these places where the fish live, the good news is is that they, they don't disappear. You know, when we're dealing with pelagic fish, um, and pelagics, you know, pelagic just means it, basically the terminology is the pelagic zone is a zone in the water column, which is like on the higher zone and it's above. We refer to pelagics, we usually mean tuna, you know, dolphin fish or mahi mahi, bonito, stuff like that. And the pelagics we don't really deal with because they come and go. They don't stick around in the cold water. You know, they have to eat um, and they continue to eat and they don't slow down. So the pelagics don't really ever stop. They don't live anywhere. They don't typically sit on reefs. They're not living in under rocks and under docks and stuff like that. They're constantly on the move. So pelagics, they, they tend to just disappear. They move, they go somewhere else. They go to a, little, a warmer water. You know, the tuna goes south into Mexico. Um, a lot of fish do. The bonito, the mahi-mahi, they'll go out to Hawaii. Uh, in the Atlantic, I'm not sure where they go. Probably down to the Gulf, uh, South America and stuff like that. So they, they just follow the warm water. Um, and then they disappear. So I know that's one of the reasons people don't fish in the winter because summer fish just, a lot of them just vanish. <laughs> they just take off, you know. It's like, um, so they, they don't fish for those species they don't get on sport boats and it's like oh the, the fishing is dead because a lot of the fish that people like to catch in the summer it, it's true they 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 go and they vanish but there's many fish that stick around if, like i was saying if you live in the bays um the inshore fishing the rivers and stuff like that well there's many species of the fish that don't go anywhere they're residents to the area like we we're talking about early that like in california you have the spotted bay bass sand bass um halibut rockfish all these type of fish they don't they don't go anywhere they they live there they live in the bays they live coastal um in the kelp and um near the islands and stuff like that and they don't they don't go out to sea they don't have the means to chase bait they don't go out and forage for food and well i mean forage for food they, they don't chase the bait i guess is what i'm saying they don't go down to mexico and look for areas where it's you know, significantly warmer. They can't, their, their bodies aren't built that way. They live there, uh, up here in Florida. We've got, uh, like the redfish right where I'm at on the St. John's river, redfish, uh, speckled trout, mangrove snapper, uh, like the whiting, all these fish, they, they just live here. The black drum flounder, uh, they stay in the river. Um, they stay in these zones and they're here year round. And why that's an advantage is because, well, they have to eat. They don't disappear. They're not like the pelagics. So if you're somebody that only chases pelagics, you know, you got to understand that there are fish that are resident fish that just basically live here 24 seven. They go into different zones and stuff, and we'll get into that a little better, but um, not all fish just, just disappear off the radar, you know, because it gets, because the water gets cold that a lot of them, they maintain, they stay, they, they live here. So, um, Really, it's a great opportunity to get these things. <clears throat> so we've established that, you know, we have resident fish and these are the fish that we're going to target. You know, obviously the ones that don't move uh, around, they're not going down into different countries and stuff like that and following slip streams. They're staying here. And um, so the good news is that they are staying and they do have to eat. We're all familiar with the 90-10 zone, right? So basically what that means is 10% of the fish live in one area. 90% of the fish don't live in the water. So when you look at the ocean or rivers or um, lakes or something like that, the idea is that the fish really are in only 10% of the, the zones. It's the 90, 10 zone. Um, there's books on it and stuff like that. You guys can check that out. It's a pretty popular topic. So when it comes to fishing in the winter, it really becomes more important because you know, the fish aren't going to move as much. And this is one of the things where it can kind of become an advantage. Cause a lot of times when you find them, um, you're usually on them pretty well because they consolidate to certain places. Um, when it's warmer, they're a lot more apt. Their body's warmed up. They can move. They're looking for bait. They're looking for other places to go, um, swimming around. They're spawning. There's so much more that goes on in the spring and summer. Um, but winter, you got to find the zone. So you think, oh, how do I find the zone? Well, one of the keys is to actually find 
the warmer the warmer pockets of water we know it's cold you know the temperatures drop massively so they're normally going to congregate around the warmer water now you got to find this spot but once you do it usually pays dividends um and one of the simplest kind of ways to do this is look for the shallower zones uh, that tends to be the key so let's take san diego bay for example one of my favorite spots to fish is called uh, i launch off kellogg if i'm in my kayak for example i go out there um and it's dock fishing you know it's i think some of the best like size spotties are out in that area i've had a lot of good success there tournament fishing and stuff um the problem is it's some of the deepest docks um in the san diego bay and it's right by the mouth and the inlet as well so inlets bring in a lot of cold water there's a lot of moving water and then the docks are deep themselves if you go to like the kellogg area in the winter it is really 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 hard to catch fish um they move on you know and they they find different zones and they're just not around those deep docks or if you go in the south bay which is south san diego bay you just keep going south you know a few miles into the same bay all of a sudden the water turns much much warmer sometimes 10 degrees warmer because it's a lot more shallow i mean i've been out there uh, with buddies and we've seen boats um you know stuck on sandbars because they get caught in low tide and it sucks you know they're going to be there for hours they're going to have to wait for high tide to come up and it's it's that shallow and the bite is usually better in south bay and you'll see a lot of anglers going in uh, to the south bay area uh, to go get bit and that's just because the water is warmer the fish will go towards warmer and even if it's a degree uh two degrees two degrees warmer um that's a huge benefit to you guys you know it's it's finding that that warmer zone and even if you're going to fish the docks fish towards the shallower ends um go to instead of going to the end docks that are face the channel that are 25 30 feet deep go way in there even even from shore this is probably more beneficial for shore fishermen than anything because they're likely going to be near the rocks where it's shallow and you know 25 feet of water as opposed to five feet of water is a big difference with temperature uh, the sun will heat it up that much more and that's where those fish like to kick it uh, in same i've been finding the same thing here in florida i've only fished you know a handful of times i'm still learning but in st john's river is pretty shallow you know but towards the middle and towards the end it's um it gets pretty deep. I've seen it like 40 feet in the center. Um, and even around some of these docks is um, five, seven feet. And you think, oh, well, that's pretty shallow. But yeah, when you go up uh, into some of these little grass flats and the tributaries and stuff where it's literally like two feet of water or less, um, that's where we've been doing a lot of fishing. And the water is just, it's so much warmer in those super shallow zones, especially because up here in Florida, yeah, it's a little different than California. So in Florida, if and you can find some of these places in California, uh, but it more so happens in Florida is that the water will recede. So at, at low tide, the water basically recedes completely. Um, and the sun just gets a chance. It bakes the ground. It bakes the land. I mean, the whole area gets hot. So when the high tide comes in, I mean, it's basically just doing that much more for the water. Like it's, it's heating up the water. And then it's already shallow. So even at high tide, it's still maybe two, three feet of water. It's already got the warm land. And now it's so thin that you definitely just get that much, much warmer water um, is going to produce more fish. And so that's really just the key takeaway is, man, find that warm water uh, and you're going to find the fish. So look for the shallower ends. And that's that's really the key. So a lot of talking just to say, find shallower water. Uh, the shallower water was probably going to produce warmer water which is going to produce more fish because even a couple degrees up um definitely going to benefit you guys so that's just one thing i really want you guys to take away um another one is one mistake i see is people downsizing their jigs lures no matter what it is but you also it's it's not a mistake to downsize it's a mistake to only downsize and not change the profile as well. And I've talked about this on some of my other shows is, you know, if you're only changing uh, the size of the bait, say you're going for like a drop shot and you've got like a four inch fluke on there or something and they're not eating the fluke, and then you switch to a three inch fluke and then you switch to a two inch fluke and you're using the same technique, but you're j just downsizing. Um, what I'm saying is that doesn't always work. And what you need to do is maybe you, if you want to continue the drop shot, but change something 
with a different profile that has a different feel that has a different uh, vibration to it. Cause sometimes it's not always just the size. It's the actual bait that you're throwing. Um, especially in winter when it's, they're not just eating everything that comes down. Um, they're going to look for something that maybe feels a little different. You know, the fish have the lateral lines in their body and I've done a whole show on this, but, um, you know, the lateral line is basically it's the fish's sixth sense. And I think me and Jeff talked about this on the show a little bit too. It's, I believe the most important sense that the fish have, especially when it's murky water, dirty water and stuff like that. Um, they're perforated lines that go on the body fish and all fish have lateral lines. So basically they feel the vibrations in the water. They can tell if something's big, something's small, how it's moving. Um, is it fighting? Is it fast? Is it slow? And the lateral line tells them all those things. So sometimes if you're just using the same profile bait, that's making the same motion, it just might not be something that they're interested in. Um, so sometimes you got to change the profile. So maybe change from a fluke, throw a curly tail on or something, just changing the profile of the bait that presents a different vibration in the water can mean the difference. Um, it's like the jigs that I make, uh, the submission jigs. I make a lot of, not a lot, like a, a lot of sizes, but I make different profiles in the sizes. I usually have at least two, uh, different jig profiles for each size. So, and that's the whole reason of that is because they fall totally different ways. If we take the assassin, let's take a 15 gram assassin and sumo I make them both in 10. I make those two in, in identical sizes, but they're two completely different jigs. Um, you know, one falls the samurai or I'm sorry, the assassin, for example, falls very slow. It's a flatter jig. Um, it's an extremely slow falling jig, uh, dances nicely. And where the sumo is kind of more of a, it, it goes down faster, but it glides and wobbles. Um, and it's kind of a quicker presentation. So even though they're the same size, um, they have two different, two different actions. And that's what the difference I've been on days where just all they, all they want to eat is the sumo. And then other days, all they want to eat is the assassin, you know, cause they, for whatever reason, it's, they're keying in on whatever that vibration is uh, for that day. And some days that you both, like, it don't matter when, you know, when the bite's hot, you guys know when you could throw anything and it's wide open. Uh, but when you really got to fight for them, you got to find that thing. And I, I don't really care what it is. If you, even if you're throwing, um, like an underspin, if you've got a paddle tail on and it's not working, switch to a curly tail. Uh, if the curly tail is not working, uh, switch to a fluke and bounce it off the bottom. Um, don't just always think, oh, it's just too big. It's too big. Try try changing profiles first, I think, before you downsize. Um, and that would be, I, I think, a tip that, that's helped me in the past and I think can be beneficial to you guys. Because one thing you have to understand with the winter fishing is the fish, are they're on a risk-reward risk um, kind of scenario in their mind, meaning they have to figure out if they're going to eat something. So the good news is they still have to eat. The bad news is they don't have to eat as much. So they, they're a lot more discerning about what they're going to eat. And when we come to risk reward, and this is always the age old thing is that I, I think this is what we don't really have a consensus on. Some people say to downsize. And I've heard many people say you need to upsize and start throwing bigger baits. And the idea with the bigger bait is it gives um, the fish a reason to go eat it. And I've heard the downs, the downside because, oh, well, fish don't want to expend the energy. So they want to, they're going to go after something smaller because they know they're not going to have to chase it. So both of these are correct in the aspect that the fish are, are weighing the reward as to what they're willing to go eat in the winter. Since they don't have the energy and the metabolism has slowed you have to choose or they have to choose what they're going to go eat. And that that's something that's really important to understand is if you're sometimes putting in just a little snack in front of them. So I think using small baits that are worked too erratically don't, don't, don't produce as well, because like I said, the lateral lines, they can feel that it's small and when it's just going nuts and you're fishing too fast, again, I, I'm not a fish. I'm just speculating here, but I, I think, a lot of times that it's not worth it to them to burn up the energy, you know, like, like this is something tiny and it's all over the place. There's a chance I'm going to miss it. And 
it's just it's not even worth it. And if you're going to work small stuff, I would say you if they're going to feel it, let the lateral lines feel it. Kind of move it slow, very, very slow. Pump it, drag it. You have to give them a reason to go bite it, you know, and if it's just going crazy, it might not be be such a good idea. Where larger baits, and I, I've caught fish with larger baits in the winter, and I think mostly that's because it's a risk re- reward thing. If they can, you got to think all, all fish do is they eat, they eat and they die and they mate. Like that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. They, they live to eat or get eaten by other creatures. You know, if there's something big enough that is going to entice them, and I think this is, comes back to the risk reward. Well, they're thinking, okay, I am feeling something big is flopping around. I'm going to go take a shot at this thing. Cause I'm only going to eat once a day, maybe twice a day. And if you can throw that big bait in front of them, there's a high likelihood that they're going to go out and eat it, you know, um, at least uh, take a shot at it because it's, it's a bigger bait. So I, I don't know. I, I don't really, and this is just a personal philosophy of mine. And I know many anglers will contest this and disagree with that, which is absolutely fine because I know people that are better anglers than me that fish, you know, finesse and stuff like that. So it's, not a derogatory. And again, this is just my opinion, but I, I, I tend to, to fish a little larger, I think, than most people do in the winter, because I think fish will take a bigger risk for something a little larger, um, as opposed to, I, I know the micro, micro finesse is like what everybody kind of talks about in the winter, but um, yeah, give, give, give big baits a try. And I don't know if there's an answer to this because like I've said uh, on many of these podcasts, if anybody had all the answers, we'd be millionaires, right? Because we could write a book on how to catch fish 100% of the time. I don't think there is a um, a tried and true way. I mean, they're animals and they they all react differently. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't steer away from big baits. And I think the mindset is always use small baits and work them extremely slow. I think that's that's smart to work them slow because I don't think working a small bait fast is really that great of an idea, but give give large baits a, a shot. I think the the large baits in winter has gotten kind of a bad rap or people just don't do it because it's kind of taboo for whatever reason. Like they're not going to eat a big bait. Like its mouth doesn't get smaller. It doesn't you know, the biology of the fish doesn't change. And I, I think they're willing to, to, w- to risk it for a bigger bite and a bigger meal uh, with, you know, a smaller amount of energy. So give it a shot and um, just try try bigger baits and try different profiles. And I, I think, you, you know, you'll definitely have some luck with that. So one of the other things that I alluded to earlier, and one of the benefits is, is fishing all year. So this is not really fish related, but it's fisherman related. When it comes to fishing in the winter, it's a lot better because there's so much less pressure. Um, and I know I was joking saying, if you're listening to this show, uh, you're probably fishing in the winter, but a lot of people do not fish in the winter. And this is one of kind of the unsung heroes of winter fishing is getting to go out there with very, very, very little pressure. I can't tell you how many times um, I've launched my boat or launched my kayak and there's literally nobody around and I I'm like the only one out there every now and then you'll see another guy, you'll see a boat or two, but I've gone into boats. Uh, I've gone into boat launches and there's legit in these huge lots. There's not an, another boat out there. Um, or I don't see, you know, another kayaker. And that is really awesome because it means that, that there's a lot less pressure on the fish and it, especially all through the winter. Uh, a lot of people aren't fishing it gives you the opportunity to kind of fish where you want and then get fish that aren't pressured. You know, pressured fishing basically just means, uh, just, you know, the fish are seeing a lot of stuff. Their spots are burnt up. People are fishing all the zones. Uh, a lot of fish are being caught and released. So they're already leery, you know, of being stung again. Um, they don't want to be alien abducted for the fifth time, you know, in a day. Um they're seeing a bunch of lures. They're scared because people are rolling up on spots too fast. So the winter is really, really awesome time to go out there and really just be alone and fish in very unpressured waters. And a lot of times you're seeing fish that 
haven't seen lures in a while and um it's a really good opportunity to go out there and catch fish and i think a lot of people sleep on that um, aspect of it and they think it's oh it's cold and the fishing isn't good well maybe the fishing's not as hot because there's all these factors we have to turn into it but you know it's so much more beneficial to go out there and and fish when there's like just nobody out there because you guys know in the summer like i said when you roll up in the summer and there's no boats in the lot and nobody's kayaking when you go in the summer like you ever rolled up to a boat launch and it's just like it's chaos i did it i I do it every year summer comes around and you go to launch your boat it's just like you, you can't even get into the you're waiting in line to get in uh, to launch your boat there's then you launch your boat and there's nowhere to tie up because it's like everybody's out there running back to their cars and or they're just waiting for like people to show up and then it's just it's such chaos then you get out there like i went out this year uh, patty hopping in southern california shot down to mexico and i think i was just by myself on my boat and we were i found a patty there was one other boat there so i rolled up on it um looking for dodos and i'd say within 20 30 minutes there was legit probably like 20 to 30 boats just fishing on this one patty you know and then you go and move again and it's like then you go find a patty but there's already just a dozen boats on it the sport boats go out there and people are crowding the sport boats or even kayak fishing man you're you're going through the docks and it's like there's already two people in front of you and behind you and it's it's sure the bite's better but sometimes these spots get burnt up and the pressure's so bad that um i think you'd be surprised in the winter go out there when you're the only one be that crazy guy right be that kook be the one that that puts in the time and the dedication and i think you'll enjoy it you guys a lot if you haven't fished in the winter um go try it out um go hit those spots that you've always wanted to that are like super crowded Uh, go enjoy just being alone finding your own zones Uh, it's a good way to like look for fish for tournament too because it's you can be a lot more sneaky um especially people know you you know people know the who's who should we do like tournament fishing and stuff um people are watching they know who you are they know where you're fishing and it's a good opportunity to get into places where um you know you can go fish without showing your hand you go out in the summer it's like oh everybody's seen everybody anywhere um but the winter is like it's a good way to stealth fish um kind of learn some zones and stuff like that so definitely do not sleep on fishing during the winter and uh Hopefully you guys learned something and if you have any questions or anything, definitely hit me up and uh, check it out. I mean, that's all I've got in my winter tips and, um, you know, just just a couple things that I'm sure there's a hundred other things you guys can find or let me know or things that I missed, but just kind of a baseline on why not just some tips to fish, but why you should be fishing winters for sure. Then I had a question. Somebody actually messaged me on Instagram and I think they were asking about the submission fishing thing. And uh, they asked me about jujitsu and, they asked if I train and what rank I was. So, um, yes, I do train, um, Alliance Jiu Jitsu in San Diego. I just moved, you know, to Florida, obviously, and we're working on opening an Alliance over here in Jacksonville. Uh, I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I'm trying to get my black belt in fishing as well. I, I don't think I'm quite the black, I don't think I'm a black belt fisherman just yet, but, um, yeah, thank you for the question. It was, um, I know it was more of a question, more of a of a statement, but yeah, thank you for that. I am a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I do train, I do coach, and um, yeah, it's one of the few things I love: fishing and uh, Jiu Jitsu. Lots of parallels between the two. I think that's why I like them so much. I know I've talked about it ad nauseum. It's like um, they're individual sports, you know, but they both take um, they both take teams. You know, they take teams and they take other people to get better. Uh, they take training partners. Uh, whether you're watching stuff like this or listening to it, uh, you still have to go out and do it. You know, nobody can roll for you on the mats, uh, just like nobody can fish for you. Uh, ultimately, you got to go out there, throw the line. You got to reel in the fish. I mean, I guess you could hand off the rod, but we don't really count that as a, it's like a half fish. Somebody hooks one. It, it's pretty cool though. If you're, if you're on a boat and you hook a fish for somebody that hasn't got one, I mean, I don't want to say there's too much shame in that, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's up to you to hook the fish, uh, find it and stuff like that. And, um, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Thank you for the question. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, basically hit me up on in- Instagram, um, Submission Fishing Co. We're on YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this, you guys, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And um, 
yeah, just I appreciate all the support, guys. It's it's the end of the year. You guys have been great. Uh, for all you guys tuning in, always watching these, the support on the podcast, all you guys going to the site, um, you know, buying some jigs, getting bit. I love seeing the pictures, man. The guys, you guys, when you guys post that stuff on um, Instagram or just sometimes you even share them with me, you know, personally, and I don't even post them. It's like you just, you send me the ones in my DMs. It is so awesome to see. And uh, supporting all the local tackle stores, you know, we're in 20 plus tackle stores in California. Uh, we're in one in Utah. And, I really appreciate that. I mean, these tackle stores are making reorders. So obviously you guys are out there buying them. I really appreciate it. And um, it means a lot to me. And <clears throat> yeah, that's about all I have for you guys today. And, um, you know, just go out there and if you guys want to turn off the uh, podcast at this point, you can. I'm going to talk about some just personal stuff on this point. But um, yeah, fishing wise. Fishing wise, that's kind of end of the podcast. So if you guys uh, really appreciate you guys, Oos. Um, you don't have to listen too much, but I do got a few things to say just on a personal note. Um, you know, I just want to remind you guys to just go out there and, you know, especially when the holidays coming up, um, just be with your loved ones, you know, care for them. It's uh, December 13th today. My mom, my mom actually passed away today. Um, a year ago, actually the day that I'm recording this and, you know, she died of cancer and she was at my home for a couple months, you know, on hospice and I got to take care of her. And, you know, I got a daughter that's, she didn't even get to see my uh, daughter grow up to be her beast, you know, six months old. She, she passed, my mom was still in her sixties. She wasn't very old. Um, you know, so just enjoy the holidays guys. And, um, be with the ones you love and spend time with them. And, you know, as we get older, uh, people pass away, you know, every year it becomes uh, a bigger thing, but, um, yeah, year to day it's, it, um, we lost her and it was the first, you know, you get that first Thanksgiving without her and then her first birthday pass without her. And then another Christmas without her and you know, soon it goes on and eventually I'll be gone and my daughter will be here and it's just spend the time, you know, and, I think it's one of the reasons to go fishing and I tell people a lot too, like you don't find a reason to not go out and do something and go out and fish. And I tell people, listen, go buy the kayak, uh, go buy the boat. You know, if you can afford it, be reasonable, even, but even if you got to stretch a little bit or you got to save up, make it something worth saving up for and getting, because those memories are, you don't ever get the memories back, you know? Um, or I shouldn't say that the memories are. So basically it, it's the memories that you have with you when you go and when you die, you know, nobody is like on their deathbed saying, Oh, I wish I worked more. I wish I put in more work, you know, or even made more money. The money really doesn't mean anything at the end. Um, but it's all the memories. And some of my best memories, honestly, was fishing with my mom. She was, and I didn't really know this till later. I used to fish with her a lot. She took me as a kid. It, honestly, she's probably the one that got me into fishing. Uh, her dad and her uncles were, so her brothers were big fishermen. And she used to go fishing too. We used to go out and she'd take me on the sport boats. And it was only a couple times a year, uh, once or twice, twice a year. But it was what I always looked forward to as a kid. I love, I, I absolutely loved the fishing trips. And she always fished. And I didn't know this, but when she was younger, she worked on a fishing boat. And she sent me pictures where... They're pulling up gannions of rockfish. And my dad was telling me that. He was like, yeah, your, your mom worked on fishing boats when she was like 17 and when she was younger. And even if up, up to a few years ago, um, when I would do my submission at seas and I would take uh, my company out on fishing trips, I mean, she'd go with me. And a couple of years ago, like she face planted into the bait tank, you know, and she just shook it off like it was nothing. <laughs> she was out there just throwing bait. I mean she, I mean, she liked fishing. It, it was surprising because she was not a woman that you would, you would think was like really into fishing, but she loved being on the boat. She loved water. Um, you know, we buried her at sea. She wanted her ashes spread. So we, she, um, out there by Point Loma, we did a burial at sea and just go out there and make the memories guys, you know, take the kids out. Um, and even the memories for yourself, because some of my fondest memories are based around fishing and, even when I'm out on my kayak to this day, it's like, 
it, I went out this weekend and it was just like, I caught a single fish, but it didn't really matter because it was just being out on the water, paddling by, looking at the homes, being under the bridges, being on the water is just like, that's really what it's all about. You know, instead of just finding, a, finding reasons to not go fish or talking yourself out of fishing, um, just go do it guys. And that that's, I guess my PSA, the life is short and, um, get out there and do some of the things that you want to do and share them with the people that you love, you know, take your kids out, take your wife out. If they're into it, my, my wife likes fishing. Um, you know, my mom used to like fishing, so uh, we've had a lot of good memories about that. And just wanted to share that with you. I don't know why it was something that came to me. And I, I guess just looking at the date here on my computer and, you know, this morning talking to my sister a little bit and we are reflecting, Oh, mom used to like this. Mom used to like that. And it goes by quick guys. Um, you know, it really does go by quick. So make those memories, get out there and enjoy it and just go get bit. So with that somber note in the end, it just celebrate things guys and, and enjoy it. That, that's really what I want to stress to you guys. And, um, that's all I have. We're coming up on the holidays. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna have a show. Let me see here. I think we probably have one more show. Maybe we'll do a holiday show. What day is it? The 13th. Yeah. Yeah. I think we still got to be, we'll probably do another one next week. Uh, we'll see what happens. And then around Christmas, obviously we probably won't, but, um, yeah, we'll get another one in and, um, Oh, of course we will, because I got a guest. We've got um, I got a good net guest for you guys next week. Actually, I'm not gonna spoil it. So um, he's a new guest to me. This dude, the Slayer. So uh, should be super exciting next week, and we will have a good show. And I got some other good guests lined up. I think after New Year's, you know, a lot of people are like busy and stuff with the holidays. So I totally understand. But um, we got some good shows coming up, and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for everything. Until next time, get your black belts and fishing, guys. Oos.